All right, I wasn't gonna film this because I figured for sure somebody on YouTube would have a video of how to do this. There isn't one. At least I'm not finding one when I search. When I search, I find one, the only one I see of how to wire a shell is a dude doing his Toyota Tacoma. Well, that's, that's close, but it's, it's not it. And we're not doing government work, so here we go. I'm gonna make a video. And this is funny because this is exactly what got me into YouTube and made me start doing videos. I would be wanting to do something on my truck and there was no video of it. And again, you know, I'm totally about the OBSs, right? So I got my OBS Suburban, got my brother's OBS Sierra. He got this shell, nice shell, really good condition, except for lights are busted and would love to have the third brake light working. So we're gonna get into that. Um, so obviously I'm on my iPad trying to search stuff up, not finding anything. I'm in my manual for Hanes. You know, my simple repair manual, this thing's so freaking old, I got it with my 2000 Tahoe 20 years ago almost. And I'm looking at what the colors are, tracing back to hazard and turn. You know, I don't see in this diagram where is my freaking brake lights, but with these bulbs, they are dual function, right? So you have brown and yellow, brown and dark green, because the yellow is going to be your brake slash turn. I'm looking for stop hazard fuse right there. Boom. So orange comes in there. Orange goes there. Turns into here. You got the switch. Comes to the hazard power. So it does all the electrical stuff in here, right? Um, but at the bulb, so you see those color codes. You come here. He's got LED ones. His are a lot like mine. LED ones here. There's the ballast box. Here's the factory connection. Here's the colors we've got. So we've got a brown. And brown on all of the GM trucks that I've ever worked on is always the marker. Brown's the marker. You got a green, you got a yellow, and you got a black. Black is ground. Brown is, is running lights. Now the green and the yellow are the ones you're going to want to play with in here. The green, as you trace out things, and especially here, you go here, you see this turns to blue. <clears throat> Follow it around here. What's blue go to? That's your reverse. So that means... Our stop turn signal type one is the yellow on this one, and that matches up with what the Haynes says. Now, my only concern on this is if I tap directly into that, does it make that blink when you turn the turn signals on? It might. I don't know. So we're going to find out. So this is a sentry topper, and what's left of its rear light, you're looking at it. There's a little switch they just soldered in. The cover's gone. I don't even care about looking for the light bulb because I'm going to take some of my spare. These little white LEDs used to be in the wheel well here if you followed my stuff long enough. So I'm going to put them up, use some 3M tape to glue them inside the frame here so they shine the light down into the bed. At a later date we'll probably tap in with even more longer runs of white lights all the way around inside. There's carpet up here so that'd be easy to velcro to. But we're going to ditch this all together. Whoever did this, that's how the wire was done. They twisted it together and put freaking electrical tape on it. Man, I hate freaking amateur wire type crap. But I'm into my stash of all kinds of different wires from who knows where I got them all from. Different light kits that had different wires and I don't like the color coding on them or whatever. But I saved the wire. There will be days like this that I can actually use it. So I'm going to use yellow and black to wire these in. And some trailer colors here, a red color here, I don't know. I'll figure out what I'm going to do for the brake light. Investigating into this truck, since it's a 1990, there is no center mount high stop lamp, the Chismul or center high mount stop lamp, however it's freaking said in there. You'll find it in here. Yeah, who cares where it's at, but it's Chismul. Is what it, it's C-H-S-M-L. There's C-H-M-S-L, that's how it's always done in GMC, their GM style. I don't see one in this truck at all, I can't find one. So I'm going to take the risk, I'm going to wire this up in here to the yellow, and there's a probability this will blink when the turn signal's on. Um, don't know what else to do. I called Jordan Camper, the guys I usually go to for a lot of stuff, and... <laughs> Their dude behind the, the counter is like, well, you can get on our schedule. No, I don't have time to get on the schedule. I'm doing this stuff myself. It's simple wiring, but I don't know what else you do on an older truck like this. How else you make a more modern center mount high stop lamp work. So we're going to go that route and uh, 
make it work. Your newer trucks, looking on the forums and stuff, and I hate digging into forums, your newer trucks in the factory harnesses up under the tailgate, there will be a chin, chin, chimsel. Yeah, chimsel is how you'd say it. But there will be a chimsel lead because they anticipated toppers going on and the rear stoplight being there for safety. So if you've got something that's 21st century, you can probably find in your towing harness that's usually under the bed in here, you can find a wire under there. It's blue and something else. You can usually find that and then you got a much easier life than I do with an old OBS truck. So let's get back into it. For those that doubt I actually use heat shrink, I got stacks and stuff of it sitting around. The question right now is in this stash, oh big size, do I have a size I want? Those are all big or tiny, so looks like we'll be breaking into this box. So yeah, I use heat shrink. So we stuck a switch in here. I'm running the power through a little grommet and a hole. Comes down here. I'm following the factory harness all the way up the frame rail. So it's tied. I zip tied it all the way to the factory harness. I brought it up here. Um, yeah, I did have to switch colors because I ran out of trailer harness wire. Just some scrap stuff I had around. And so I switched to the green and brown. And I'm running that all the way across into the power center where the old 90s ones went. So within that power center, I'm just using one of the grounds that already gets used by factory stuff. And I'm using one of these power posts. And so green, brown, pretty simple to maintain other than the fact that somewhere underneath the driver's door, I switched from green to yellow. But hey, it's the brown Santa Claus. But yeah, so otherwise, Pretty simple to do, I'm getting power. The only thing I'm leaving a lot of loop here for is because I need to get a fuse on here and I'm out of them right now. So we're gonna have to go to O'Reilly's and get one of those. I need this to run for now so I can see exactly what the polarity is on my lights back there. But otherwise don't leave it like this. Get yourself a fuse in here and we will do that. So that's coming. Otherwise, the other thing I wanna do for them, my old battery terminals, I'm gonna replace this crap. So cool thing about this is they already had the underhood lamp coming out of a little hole that's already in the molding on the side, so I'm just utilizing that. Would also like to get some tie-ins to put this line up and out of the way. We'll see about getting some of those too. But yeah, coming along. All right, here we go. Switch right there, boom. Three LEDs up there throwing a lot of light forward. Later on, we can tap into the end of these LEDs and send more LED strips that way. But for today, he's got three strips of light. He's a heck of a lot more than what this thing came with from the factory. And on a nice little switch that, because right here in this plastic bed liner, there's a lot of space between where the spar is here and where that is there. Sweet little space. Three strips up there. Boom. All right, on this one, I'm going back to my old school methods. It's just because I want the crimp because that's the brake light we're, we're messing with. But because I don't trust those two crimp points, I'm going to slide on a little bit of regular heat shrink. Because that's the last system we want failures on on this truck, right? Boom, belts and suspenders. And this piece was cut to be longer than what that one was, so that should be totally and completely watertight now. Time to button it up. Okay, obviously we need to get him one of the Hyperflash LED modules. We've got it all in there. And this is what I don't know how to fix. This truck doesn't have the CHMSL, the Chismal, whatever you call that thing, the Chimsel. Since it doesn't have that in there, so a 1990 truck, they didn't start putting them in until about 1994, that's gonna happen since it's hooked into that but it will give that third break. Obviously he's got some bulbs out, but whatever. And we also, boom, that's quite a bit of light. About with, so yeah, that's a good and decent amount of light for a long bed. Now if anybody knows more about how to do that, if there's something I'm missing, feel free to speak up in the comments. Otherwise we've got all the wiring there. I'm trying to keep it out of the way, keep it from getting snagged. I only wrapped it in electric tape to keep it together. But we're pretty much done with this one for now. Other than we need to add a, a fuse in for the, the lights back here. And this is it. Hope this did you some good. It's the only video I've seen. Well, it will be as soon as I post it because I've seen no other videos of anybody showing how to do it on a GMT 400. 
So at least I'm putting something up. Someone else tell me if there's a video out there that does this. Otherwise, hope this did you good. And we'll catch you on the next one.